through the Simpson rule, Simpson's rule which states that the area under a curve can be found by the following formula. So this is an estimation and this is also called the numerical integration method. So here a formula is the area under the curve S can be given by H over 3 times y0 plus 4y1 plus 2y2 and so on. So this is your height, okay, or this is, we are calling, this is equal width, okay. This is height and this is, this is h not height and your height is y0. So this is at this point, at this point on the curve, your height uh, is y0. So this is y1 and this is your h or this is your width of equal width. So let me write, so width equal width is h. Your width is, so let me write here, equal width is h. And your height, uh, y0, y1, and so on. y0, y1, up to yn. So this is yn, so one before that is yn minus one. This is yn minus two. So if you know, if you can divide a curve of any shape into equal widths of h, and you know the individual height at each point, and use this formula, you can find the area. So let's prove this, which is a very interesting uh, result. So to understand this, let's, uh, let's first think about a parabola. So let me draw a y-axis, and this is the x-axis. Okay, so if you take, so let me draw a curve, a curve can be of any nature. Okay, so a curve is like this, and let me take three points, okay. So this point is important, so we're going to point, plot this, take this point, this point, if you, if you, if you take any three points, and let me draw a dotted line here. So this is, these are three points, we're only looking at these three points. So this point is say, let me call this a minus, uh, let me go back. I want to take at suppose equal distance. Suppose this is this is at negative h, so this is zero, and so this is positive h at equal width. So let me make an estimate. So this is h, and this is negative h. Okay. So this the coordinate of this point is zero. 0 comma y1. I'm going to call this the coordinate is negative h comma y0. So this is y0, this is y1, and this is y2. And this point is h comma y2. So if you have any three points, if you have any three points that can or that would determine a, a parabola. So I can draw a parabola. So if you join these three points, any three points anywhere can do define a parabola. So these three points, let's say the general equation, this this is a parabolic. If you join three points, that does give you a parabola. You can say that you can write the equation of a parabola from three points. So these are the three points. So the general equation of this parabola or this curve is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. ax squared plus bx plus c. If there are two points, you can draw a straight line. In the same way, if there are three points, you can draw a parabola. So if that is the case, the area between area of this region, we're talking about this region. So let me shade this region. The area of the curve under the x-axis and the curve would be the definite integration from minus h, the area would be from minus h to h of this function, which is ax squared plus bx plus c dx. Using definite integration, the same principle think about splitting this into small bits of strips. Suppose imagine this is a, let me use a different color, I keep using 
let me use brown color. So imagine this is an infinite, infinitesimally thin strip, okay? And where your height is y and your width is dx. And that's what your dx is, and this is your y. This is your y, and you're adding all the infinite, uh, infinitely thin uh, line segments from minus h to plus h. That will give you the area under this curve. Okay, so using integration, so you can say, well, area would be, uh, integration of ax would be ax cube over 3 plus integration of bx is bx squared over 2 plus integration of c is cx. And the limits of integration is from minus h to h. Okay, so we can say, well, area is equal to, so let's substitute the value. So putting h here, so this will be a h cube over 3 plus b h squared over 2 minus, sorry, plus c h minus, I'm putting minus h here. So if you put minus h here, I hope you can understand this will be a, let me write this like this, a times minus h cube over 3 plus b times minus h squared over 2 plus c times negative h. So let me close the bracket. Okay. So this a is equal to, so let's open the bracket. So this is a h cube over 3 plus b h squared over 2 plus c h. Okay. Now what will happen? So this is, so let me put again this in the bracket, minus. This is minus h cube. Minus h cube will become minus h cube. So this is minus a h cube over 3. Minus h squared is plus h squared. So this will not change. The sign would become b h squared over 2. And this is minus c h. So now area. So opening the bracket. This is a h cube over 3 plus b h squared over 2 plus c h. And this minus and minus will become plus. This is plus a h cube over 3 minus, and this is plus, so this is minus b h squared over 2. And this is negative and negative will make this positive. So what will get cancelled? This and this will get cancelled. So the area defined by these three points, defined under this curve, would be 2a h cube over 3 plus 2c h. Okay, so this is the area under the curve under three points. If you take three points and you draw a parabola, so the area under the curve can be defined by these three or by this equation. Okay, now the next step is to write in terms of uh, y0, y1, and y2. So what can we do? So we know, uh, so the area under the curve is given by this equation. Okay, so now what can we do? So let's leave this as a result. So let's just say this is result 1. Okay. So let's go back to the equation. We say the equation of the curve is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, now what do we know? When x is 0, when x is 0, what is h? What is y? y is equal to, so let's go back to the curve. We're talking about this curve. When x is 0, what is y? y is y1. y is nothing but y1. So this implies in place of y, I can put y1 is equal to, this becomes 0, so a times 0 squared is 0, b times 0 is 0. So this is c, you can replace by, c you can write as y1. Okay, now let me use a different color. So when x is negative h, when x is negative h, what is y? Let's go back to the curve. When h is neg when x is negative h, y is y is zero. Y is y 
0. So let's put this again, this equation, so we can say this implies y, this is negative h, sorry. So y naught or y0 is equal to a times negative h squared plus b times negative h plus what is c? c is y1. In place of c I can put y1 because I put this in place of c I have put y1. That's why I wrote y1 here. So I can say this implies y0 is equal to a h squared minus b h plus y1. Okay, that is y0. So y0 is this equation. So let me write this as equation. Let's, let's write this as equation 2. So what's the next value that we have when x is h? The next is h, y is equal to y1, no y2. When x is h, y is y2. So y is y2, so which implies y2. We are putting this where? We are going to put this again in this equation. In place of y, I am putting y2. So this is a times h squared plus b times h plus y1, plus y1, this is equation, plus y1, so this is equation number 3. So let me add y1 and let me add 2 plus 3. So I'm going to add the left hand side of 2 to the left hand side of 3. So this becomes y0 plus y2, y0 plus y2, so this and this gets cancelled. If you add this, this is 2a x squared plus 2y1. Okay, so now making this the subject, this is y0 minus 2y1 plus y2 is equal to 2a x squared. 2a h squared. So this is the result number 4. This is 2a, not this is not b, this is h squared. We are almost there. This is result 4. Okay, so let me write this. Let me bring this down. What did we write? Okay, so I'm going to copy this. Copy and I'm going to paste it here. So we wrote uh, so I have only copied that. So let me let me copy this whole thing. Okay. So copy and I'm going to paste it here. And delete and I'm going to paste it here. Hopefully, yeah. So this is result one. So we have got. So we know C is y one. C is y1. This is the result. What was that result number? I didn't give that result any number. So we know C is y1. So in place of C, I'm going to put y1. And I'm going to write this slightly differently. So can I say A is equal to, can I write this as uh, uh, 2AH squared times h over 3 plus 2 uh, hc. I'm writ I've rewritten the same thing in a slightly different way. Can I write 2a h cube as 2a h squared times h over 3? So I know 2a h squared is something. 2a h squared is y0 minus 2y1 plus y2. So this area will become uh, y0 minus what is 2a h squared minus 2y1 plus y2 times h over 3 plus 2hy1. Okay, so we're almost there. So area 
I can write this as uh, I'm going to factor. I'm going to make this three. Okay, so I'm going to write this as h over three times y zero minus two y one plus y two times. I'm going to if the denominator here is one. I'm going to multiply both by three here. So is the same as six h y one over three. Okay, so can you see h over three? is a common factor. So you can factor out the h over 3. So your area is h over 3 times y0 minus 2y1 plus, plus y2 uh, plus y2 plus plus 6y1 plus 6y1 so area under this curve can be defined as this. So this is h over 0 times y0 plus 4. So can you understand this is 4y1. 4y1 plus y2. So if there are three points, if a curve can be made from three points, the area under that curve can be defined by these three points. So y0 plus 4y1 plus uh, y2. Okay, so let's come back to the curve. So what are we saying? So if you take these three curve, so let me shade this. So let, if you take these three points, y0, y1, and y2, suppose if this is the curve, what's the area of this curve? So the area of this curve would be a is equal to h over 3 times y0 plus 4y1 plus y2. Okay, but if you take the next three, if you take the next three, if you take the next three points, if you take these three, that would be, I'll write with that color, plus, so again, it'll be h over 3. Let me use write it properly. So the area under this three, these three points would be plus h over 3 times this y2 is going to be repeated. Can you see this is y2 plus in between you've got y3. It'll be 4y3 plus y4. Okay, and if you take the next three, you, of course I should have not taken this point. So can you understand when you factor out the last, if you factor out h over 3, it will be y0 plus 4y1 plus y2 plus y2, which will make it 2y2. Okay, and if you take the last three, if you take the last three points, if you take the last three points, plus dot 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 plus h over 3 times, this will be y n minus 2. This will be repeated. Okay, this will be repeated from this one. So it'll be two. So it will be y, y n minus two, y n minus two. So let me scroll this slightly to this side. Y n minus two plus four, y n minus one, plus y n. I hope you have not confused you. So when you simplify this, y zero and y one will be uh, will not have any coefficient. Y, the middle coordinate, the middle height will be will be four times, and y two plus y two will make it two y two, and that's why you have this formula y zero plus four y one plus y two. You can simplify this if you want to. So this is equal to h over three times y zero plus y n. Y zero plus y n will have no coefficient, you'll have 4 times the odd ones, that is y1 plus y3 plus y5 and so on, it'll go on up to infinity, plus 2 times the even heights, that is y2 plus y4, and this is again even, okay, plus uh, y, 
it'll go up to infinity and this is the area under the curve using the Simpson's rule.